continuing um, exegetical study. That means that it's uh, line by line and precept by precept, and we're really breaking open the Word of God. And it's in the book of Acts, and it's Acts chapter 1 and verse number 17, and I believe the, the focus tonight is going to be between verses 17 and 20. And as you can see, something new is afoot here. Uh, pastor has been really, uh, this has been a burden on my heart uh, that we would maximize everything we have. And I'm just really excited that tonight, this is the first time I'll be doing some uh, Wednesday night teaching Amen. through PowerPoint. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Amen. The next step on this is that um, there's a device that we found out that I can get, which would free me from even having to be right here. And Sister Wheeler's going to agree it's touching so that I won't be blocking her view. I can be anywhere in the whole room and, uh, and, and actually have a better perspective so I don't have to be so tied right here to this court. But thanks be to God that we've got this laptop now that we can, even if it's wired, uh, you know, be hooked up. So let's look at this. Let's look at this. First of all, let's see, I'm playing with some new toys here, so y'all bear with me. Okay. The, the title for tonight's message is The Consequences of Betraying God. The Consequences of Betraying God. Somebody say, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I think we all in agreement with that. Huh? But, we're in a verse-by-verse -verse study, so that's kind of what hit me as we were looking at this. Um, you know who the subject is. The subject is Judas. Judas, the traitor. Judas, the traitor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, up to this point, we've been reading uh, the first chapter in the book of Acts, and it has all been about uh, the 11 apostles. Well, it's all been about Jesus and his resurrection and the 11 apostles witnessing it over 40 days, right? Then it was about Jesus ascending right before their eyes, right? And then after that, what? Uh, per Jesus' instructions, those 11 apostles, they went uh, to Jerusalem. They went back to Jerusalem. They were just right outside of Jerusalem. He told them, don't depart from Jerusalem until you get the promise of the Father, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So there they are. And where we left off last week, we said that they were in an upper room, and we said it was a definite maybe that it was the upper room that they had been in when, they, when Jesus instituted the new covenant. We're not totally sure, but it seemed like it made sense. So there they were, and they were praying. And all of a sudden, remember, um, they had been praying, and they were on one accord. Somebody say, pray, pray. On, one on one accord. And by the way, for those of you who didn't get an opportunity to be here last week. We really had a good time. Did we have a great time last week? Let's get it up. We did. Yeah. We had a great time. And I think, I think uh, you all have convinced me in the spirit to do that maybe once a quarter because that, that, that was tremendous where everybody got an opportunity to uh, testify and give some insight and pray and sing and all those things. Now, uh, they, they were praying on one accord and then Peter got the unction to stand up and say, let's address this issue. Uh, let's address the elephant in the room. Okay, amen? amen. If we want to use modern day language, right? Mm -hmm. The elephant in the room is that Judas is gone and, and, and there used to be 12 of us and we need to fill that vacant seat. Mm -hmm. And 12 being the number of government. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, spiritually speaking. And so, Peter didn't just, uh, if you study the scriptures, you notice that Peter is always saying something. He's always, you know what I mean? He's always the mouthpiece. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, right? But no, no change here. He jumps up and he says, I perceive that we need to handle this. And of course, he relates to Old Testament scripture. And of course, we went through those scriptures over the last couple of weeks. But let's look at this a little more. Acts chapter 1 and verse 17. There we are. Okay, let's read this together. Peter says, For he was numbered with us and had a pertaining part of this ministry. So he, he's talking about who? Judas. Okay, so Peter gets up. He is uh, not yet 
filled with the Spirit, but he has the Spirit, and they've been praying, and he says, under the leading of the Spirit, he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. And he was talking about Judas, right? Now, I know it's been a couple of weeks since we actually were in the text, because last week we had a Holy Ghost, you know, enclave and party and prayer meeting. But you may not remember, but two weeks ago you all asked me some questions. And the Holy Ghost brought it back to my remembrance. And they were relative to Judas, okay? So I'm going to kind of bring them back to your attention and remembrance because the Holy Ghost brought it to my attention. So he says, Peter says, he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry, meaning this apostolic ministry. And notice, what I want you to know is, Peter said he was numbered with us. Uh, two weeks ago, you all were bringing up the question, somebody asked the question, I can't remember who it was, they asked the question, Pastor, do you think that uh, Jesus knew uh, what, what Judas was going to be and what he was going to do, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. I think we all agree that the Son of God knew, right? Yes. But, but one of the things that I wanted, oh, and two weeks ago, I asked you to help me find the scripture where Jesus selected his apostles. Y'all were no help at all. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. I asked y'all, y'all didn't help. Actually, it was a homework assignment. Somebody was supposed to get it for me. <clears throat> Whoever, who, anybody. You know, like that old joke, anybody was supposed to do it. Somebody could have done it, some have done it, but it, nobody ended up doing it. But I ended up doing it because I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you that when, listen, this is very important. I wanted to show you that when Jesus um, selected Judas, he didn't do it happenstancely. He didn't do it willy-nilly. He didn't, you know, he didn't do it whimsically. He did it very soberly and spiritually. Are y'all with me? Yes. Therefore, proving in the scripture, he didn't do it by mistake. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Right. Okay, so look at this. Luke 16. Luke 16. Excuse me. Luke 6 and verse 12. Thank you. Luke 6 and verse 12. Uh, I'm getting used to this thing. This is cool, but it doesn't show on the screen. It shows on the wall, but it won't show on the screen. That's kind of weird, huh? It won't show on the screen. Isn't that something? Anyway, Luke 6 and 12. It does, on the, it does in the, in the uh, you know, on Sunday. So that's the wall. That's the wall. Because that's, yeah. that's the wall. Is that it? Okay. I agree with all what y'all say. <laughs> Don't point it up. Probably use the mouse or the PC. Let's see what happened there. Are you there? You should be able to use the mouse on the PC. It should work. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The mouse on the PC. The mouse on the PC. The pointer on your cursor. Oh, your cursor. Oh, yeah. 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 It says, and it came to pass in those days that he went out. Who's the he? Jesus. Jesus. He went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Well, we said that we want to not only study, but we want to apply, right? So I, the first thing that's hit me by the Spirit is when you have an important decision to make, you're going to need to spend some time, some real time in prayer. Yes. It, could, it, could be, it could be what we used to call in school an all-nighter. Mm -hmm. Anybody remember any all-nighters? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, now, you know, hey, I, man, we had some... We had some all nighters in school, or you know, yeah, those are the days. Those are the days when I was drinking coffee. You know, I don't drink coffee anymore, but those are the days when I was drinking. This was all night. Anyway, Jesus pulled an all nighter, and he went to the mountain to pray. 
Did you see something else there? Sometimes when there are important decisions to make, you have to spend a lot of time in prayer. What else do you see there? You got to get away from some folks. You got to get away from some folks, and you got to get away from some things. In other words, you know, it's a, this is really a really good point because people will come to me as a man of God, as a pastor, and they'll ask me about various things. And one of the things that happens when they ask me about important issues in their lives, one of the first things the Spirit will tell me to tell them is, you need to fast and pray. Mm -hmm. Translation, you need to get away from all of the, the, the distractions mm -hmm. of the world. You need to consecrate yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, this kind of implies getting away from food. It implies getting away from folk. Mm -hmm. It implies getting away from fun. It implies getting away from fellowship. It, all the S. I just gave you a lot of S. But all of that so that you can get to a, a solitude, a, a private place, and, and get with God. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, uh, and it says that he continued all night in prayer to God. There it is. All night in prayer to God. All right. Verse 13. And when it was day, he called unto him. All right, after that long night of prayer, when it was day, he called unto him. Notice he hadn't, had, he hadn't slept. He called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve. Now, you got to catch that in the spirit. It says, when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, mm -hmm. and of them, what's them? The disciples. And, and, and out of those disciples, he chose 12. Well, how many disciples were there? No, no, no. Maybe seven. Seven years. Huh? Seventy. We, we don't know. We don't know. There were 120. Wait a minute. Let's not get this confused. There were 120 when they were in this upper room. But at this point, this is, I'm going back. I'm taking a little bunny trail to go back to show you what Jesus did. Remember, Peter, you know, it's like watching a movie, and you're watching the movie, and then they do what you call, you know, what do they call A flashback. flashback. This is a flashback, y'all. I'm flashing back so that when Peter said in real time, he was numbered among us in the ministry. I'm flashing back to show you when he got numbered among them in the ministry. Are y'all with me? Yes. yes. So it happened in Luke chapter 6. That was, I knew it was Luke. I thought it was 10 and I found out it was 6. Anyway, the point is, the point is, we don't know how many disciples there were at that time following Jesus. It was a lot. Remember, this is an interesting point. This is an interesting point. This is Luke chapter 6. If, if you study this out, you'll find out it's Luke chapter 6 and Matthew chapter 6 where Jesus is is rolling out his doctrine. Mm -hmm. You know, the Sermon on the Mount is Matthew 5 and 6. Am I right about that? And, and if you compare it, correlate it, you'll see the same thing is true with Luke 6. So he had a lot of, what's a disciple? A follower, a pupil, a learner. He had a lot of followers. But however many there were, he said, out of that number, I'm choosing 12. Are y'all with me? Yes. Yeah. So that's where I get my statement. Every uh, apostle was a disciple. But every disciple was not an apostle. Are y'all with me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Every disciple, every apostle was a disciple. In other words, they were a disciple first before they were an apostle. Yes. But every, every uh, disciple was not an apostle. Mm -hmm. Alright. It says, he called unto him his disciples and of them he chose twelve whom also he named apostles. There it is. So this is the first time that, that he actually uses the term, the name apostles. And if you study that out, apostle literally translated. Does anybody know what it means? Literally translated? Huh? Sent. Right. That's right. Sent, uh, sent one. Sent one. That's right. Apostle really just means a sent one. So he called them apostles and that's kind of a a little uh, preview of what <laughs> what was going to happen because he was going to send them out. All right. Mm -hmm. 